I am Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to talk about Dell PowerEdge FC630 blades and specifically we're going to go over the memory and CPUs inside. Let's get rolling. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the Dell PowerEdge FC630 blade server. Do us a favor, if you find anything in this video useful, click that like and smash that subscribe. All right, well, let's get started. First things first, uh, you'll notice there's actually four blades inside this 2U, 2U enclosure. Uh, the enclosure is an FX or an, an FX2 or an FX2S. This one specifically is the FX2S. As far as the actual blades themselves, uh, there's actually a couple different types. You, the ones that we have up here are the 2 by 2.5 inch, uh, specifically specifically for SAS. Uh, there's also some that are 8 by 1.8 inch. Um, so on the storage side, there's a couple of different options that you can use. As far as the CPUs are concerned, uh, there are two CPUs inside each blade. It's an LGA 2011-3 socket, which means it uses Intel Xeon E5 2600 V3 or V4 series CPUs. People ask us all the time, hey, what, would, what CPUs do you recommend? And really, it truly really depends on what application that you're using. But um, I like to go for what I kind of consider the value CPUs. Um, if you want something on the low end, uh, you can get an E5 2620V3. Uh, those are hex core and super cheap these days. Um, the value ones that I like are stuff like the E5 2660V3, 52670V3. Um, if you want something a little bit more high end, you can go to the V4s and you can get something like an E5 uh, 2690V4, E5 2695, uh, 97, 99V4. All those are really, really great high end procs. We're going to cost more. Uh, but that would be on the high end. Um, and a lot of people are using those right now since there is uh, currently a server shortage and it's hard to get Intel scalable procs. Um, so going with some high end V4s is actually a, a good um, solution that uh, you can use for um, if you don't have a, a lot of lead time to wait because some of the uh, manufacturers are three to six months to get brand new servers right now. Um, so that is a, a good option for, uh, for customers out there. As far as the RAM is concerned, it takes DDR4 memory. There's 24 DIMM slots uh, inside. You as far as the different speeds, are concerned, you can use 2133, 2400, or 2666. I will note with 2666, it'll actually clock back down to 2400, which is the true fastest speed. So if you're ordering right now, I'd recommend just buying the 2400, no need to spend extra money. If you have extra stuff laying around your data center, yes, the 2666 will work, but they will clock down. You can use a number of different sizes. You can go as low as a 4 gig, an 8 gig, a 16 gig, a 32 gig, or all the way up to 64 gig, but I will note for 64 64 gigs you can only use for one type of memory and that is load reduce. And there are two types of memories you can use, ECC registered known as an RDIM or load reduced uh, known as an LRDIM. As far as the overall max is concerned, you can get up to 768 gigabytes with ECC registered using 2432 gigs at 2400 speed. With load reduced, however, you can get double the scalability and you can get 1.5 terabytes using 2464 gigs, again, at 2400 speed. All right, awesome. Well, now that we know a little bit more about the, uh, uh, the different speeds and types, uh, what I want to do is actually open this up. I'm going to pull a blade out. I want to show you how to access it and show you how to actually install your DIMMs uh, because not everyone is going to be maxing it out. So if you're not maxing it out and you're only putting in, let's just say, 8, 8 gigs or 8, 16 gigs or something like this, what is the ideal configuration to make sure that you maximize your performance? We're going to show you that in just a second, but I'm going to put on my ESD gloves and be right back. All right, now that we have our ESD gear on, we're safe to operate inside the machine and prevent it from electrostatic discharge. So first things first, uh, normally I go over you know the CPUs and all the channels, but uh, before I get into all that, I wanted to note, um, when you're installing DIMMs into the second CPU, you're actually gonna have to remove this right here. So we're gonna go ahead and do that to start so that once we get going, it's not a problem. So you'll notice there's two screws. Just grab your, um, your screwdriver. And one thing I do wanna note, these screws actually don't come out. Um, so you're going to unscrew it and it's just going to kind of uh, pop up a little bit but not actually fully come out. Alright, so we're going to get the second one right now. Alright, so now you'll notice the ribbon cable is connecting it, so you do need to be careful with it. I try to just kind of stick it up to the side right here 
uh, so that way I have the space that I need to actually operate inside the tabs uh, but you don't want to pull it out because the ribbon is actually connecting it to the motherboard so this is something you definitely want to be very careful with okay all right now let's get rolling so CPU 1 controls the 12 dim slots over here CPU 2 controls the 12 dim slots over here um, you'll notice that everything is color-coded and labeled from Dell which makes it very super easy and convenient um, so when you look over here you will notice that there are uh, six DIMMs on each side of your CPU uh, and that breaks down to actually four memory channels and each memory channel has three DIMMs per channel and now this is important to note because this is how you're going to install it so for instance if you're maxing out like we're about to do it's not really as important which order you go in because ultimately all 24 dim slots are going to be filled up uh, but when you're not maxing out this is when it's very key because you need to know where do I install my dims how do I install them what's the best way to get my uh, my uh, overall top performance and that's what I'm here to show you so um, first things first you will notice that this white tab right here is the start of each memory channel. So this here is A1, this next white tab is A2, and you come over here to the outside, it's A3, and then A4. So if you were only going to put in, let's just say, eight DIMM slots with two CPUs, you would want to install them in the eight white tabs, because there will also be four over here on CPU2, of course. And uh, people ask, well, why would I do that? Uh, why wouldn't I just load them up and say the first eight slots? Well, it's a good question, and the reason being is that you want all of your memory channels working for you and working for you evenly. You don't want to overload, you know, three channels and then have all the rest of your channels getting nothing out of them. You want to have a nice, even distribution of your load across every channel, and this is how you'll maximize your performance. So the next thing would be, okay, let's say you're putting in 16 DIMM slots. What I would recommend then is after you go through the first four, you're going to come back over to the blacks, and this is going to be a a5, A6, A7, A8. And then when you come back over here to CPU2, again, you'd want to fill up all the white and all the black. Now the greens will all be empty, and you've now essentially put two DIMMs in each of your memory channels, and again, keeping a nice even distribution. And that's one of the things that I recommend and how we actually sell memory on our website is we, we sell them in kits that keep them even per your uh, channels. So we'll sell them, let's just say in case you only have one CPU, we'll sell four. If you have two, we'll sell eight. We'll sell 16. We'll sell 24. We'll sell them like this so that way uh, you make sure you're, you're installing them correctly. Now, of course, if you need something different, you can always uh, email us at sales at cloudninjas.com. That's sales at cloudninjas.com. Our team can um, help you out and get you if you want a different number because let's say you already have a couple DIMMs installed uh, we can get you an odd, odd number count um, and if you need a bulk discount because you're looking to order you know a whole bunch because you have you know a couple hundred of these or you know 20 of these or whatever in your, your data center we'd love to help you out so uh, give us a, a chance to help you with your upgrades and email us at sales at cloudninjas.com all right well now let's get uh, rolling I'm actually going to start installing these um, and I want to show you a couple of tips before we actually put them in um, I personally like to go through and I like to pop open all my tabs. It's not something that you have to do, but I like to do it because ultimately, um, when I get the parts in my hand, um, I don't want the tabs uh, fighting us and potentially you know, prevent the DIMM from getting in. And you know, I could accidentally drop it, I could break a capacitor, I could damage a DIMM slot, all sorts of things could happen just by you know, potentially being careless. So I, I like to um, just take a few extra seconds and just make sure that we're thinking about safety and getting things done properly. So, all right, now the next thing I want to point out is when you actually look at the memory module itself, there is this notch in the middle. Now this notch, which is known as a key, is not perfectly centered. So what's important about that is if you do not line this up properly in the DIMM slot, you could potentially damage the, the uh, module itself or you could damage the DIMM slot, which would render potentially the whole channel uh, useless, especially that DIMM slot wouldn't be able to work, and you might actually have to replace the whole motherboard. None of these are, are uh, an issue that you want to run into by just simply being, uh, you know, a user error or being slightly careless. So um, I always just tell people to make sure, and, and the time when it normally happens is, let's just say you start filling up over here, and you're in a good groove, and then you start to come over here, it actually flip-flops. So when you're loading it up over here, it's this way, but when you're loading it up over here, it's this way. So it's important to note because it, it's a very common user error, and I've seen uh, people
people you know bust dims and bust uh, dim slots because of it and again it's just about taking that extra second and make sure that you're doing it properly so now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to install this here into A1 and one of the things I want to note you'll see I'm not holding the module the module is in there but the module is actually not fully seated uh, you'll see the tabs here are still sticking out so you want to hear these two clicks now those two clicks let you know that you've actually ins fully ins uh, inserted the module um, and you'll also notice the tab here versus all the rest of the tabs how it's uh, completely inserted in there um, and this is something you, you need to look for because it to me this is the number one user error that we see where uh, someone goes through and they load up a bunch of modules and one is just slightly off it might even just be like you know, just this, this side's kind of sticking out a little bit like that. And when you do that, it's not fully seated and the module will not register with the board. And then it'll tell you that you have a bad dim and really you don't have a bad dim, you just need to seat it properly. So what we always tell people when we see that is just rotate your dims around. And when you do that, most of the time it, it's just a seating error and you end up seating it properly elsewhere and then the problem goes away. So again, it's just a common user error, um, something that we always like to, to point out in advance uh, because we don't want you know, customers running into any issues. So, all right, so now I'm only gonna uh, start by doing uh, the first uh, four channels here because I wanna show the users at home that aren't maxing it out the proper way to do it. And as we discussed, you'll notice I'm putting them in all the white slots. And you'll also notice that the dims flipped around as we discussed, uh, that the key is moved, okay? So this is the proper way to do it here, okay? Now I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward because I don't wanna waste anyone's time. I'm gonna load this whole thing up and I'll be right back. All right, so now you'll see we have completely maxed this out. We've put in 1.5 terabytes of RAM using 2464 gigs. Uh, we actually did install 2666, but uh, these are just gonna clock back down as we had kind of discussed. Now, as far as uh, how to put this back in, it's really simple. You'll see there's two uh, rivets on the side. You just wanna make sure you line those up properly and then put the screws back into the appropriate holes. And then you're just gonna put this back, uh, screw this back down and you're done. So really this is a, a very simple process. Um, if you're looking to upgrade your RAM, uh, know that yes, you could do this. This is very easy to do. Uh, to me, this is one of the uh, easiest upgrades out there as far as not really needing to be a, uh, a true uh, computer technician and you can do this. And if you have any questions, you know, feel free to email us. We'd love to help you out. And um, if you're actually looking to build one of these, uh, we have some of these in stock and we actually custom build uh, servers. This is actually a server that we're custom building for a customer right now that's going out today. Uh, so we'd love the opportunity to help you with building some of your blades or your rack mounts. Um, and if you made it this far, hey, do us a favor, click that like, smash that subscribe. Hey, thanks for stopping by. Take care, guys.